Welcome to Faith Church Online Worship Service. I'm Pastor Adam. And it is May 30th, Saturday, and our cities, the Twin Cities, have been rocked this week. I probably don't even need to tell you that, but for those of you who uh, have lived here a long time, or for those of you who are newer to the area, like my wife and I, I'm guessing that you are feeling weary, you are feeling exhausted, you are feeling pain. And this series, this service is a service that is going to be filled with lament, confession, repentance, and crying out to God. Well, what do we have to offer? We, as a church, what do we have to offer? But a God who meets us in our lament and who meets and hears the cries of the oppressed, a God who has experienced suffering going so far as to offer himself as a sacrifice that Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me on the cross? And almost in the same breath, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. This morning we come as a people who do not have our act together to a God that meets us in our mess, so let's take a moment as we begin in silence, as we approach this holy God. Please join me in laying down your anxieties, lifting up your hearts, and offering them to a God who knows lament, who hears our suffering. Let's take a moment. Come, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Today we will be reading from Acts 2, 1-4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house in which they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit enabled them. The God of the whirlwind and fire sweeps into our presence in this hour. God, who called all the world into being, calls forth new life in us today. God, whose Spirit unites all people in a common language of love, confirms God's gifts in us as we worship Him together. Glory be to God, who has opened up the heavens to pour out His Spirit upon us to awaken us and to open our eyes and minds and hearts to God and his truth. We waited for this day, we're gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening. Like 
place, your glory on our face, we're looking to the sky, descending like a cloud, you're turning with us now, Lord, unveil our eyes, you're the reason we're here, you're the reason we're singing, open of all that our community is going through, all that this country is going through, all that the world is going through at this time. Hear these words of greeting from God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you. From God our Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. In response, God's people can say, Amen. a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Jesus, my Redeemer. 
please pray with me, confessing our brokenness and our need for the Holy Spirit to transform our hearts and our world. Holy Spirit, you are so full of energy, you are like fire. And like fire, you came upon the disciples at Pentecost. But this past week, our lives, our city, and our nation have not blazed with your spirit. We struggle to move through a global pandemic with wisdom, understanding, and compassion, but often descend into blaming and name-calling. May your spirit guide us and comfort those who have lost loved ones or livelihoods. Protect those whose paths consistently expose them to risks of exposure. Guide leaders making hard decisions. Empower and guide scientists working towards treatments and vaccines. Lord, we are stunned once again and deeply troubled by the loss of life in our city's streets. We mourn with those who are suffering the loss of a precious family member and friend. We lift up to you those who live in fear because of racial injustice in their communities, from mothers gripped by fear for their sons and young people who cannot see a glimmer of possibility or hope. We pray for communities that carry the weight of generations of broken down relationships between law enforcement and the people they are called to serve. We pray for police officers who continue to show up for work, doing a dangerous job and personally blame for others' failures. Give them wisdom and strength as those whom we rely on to maintain composure, fairness, and a commitment to the common good. Grant them protection and empower them to serve justly. We lament our history of racism and pray for love in the face of violence. Forgive our desire to rush past this loss, to turn away from the messiness and the pain, to offer cliches when we should be silent. Teach us to be humble and listen to the pain, rage, and grief pouring from the lips of our neighbors. Give us wisdom and courage to grow in our awareness and work for justice. Holy God, as we have sung, we thank you for giving us your Son. We come to you not as those who could ever obtain righteousness on our own, but as your dearly loved children, clothed in the righteousness of Jesus. How we marvel at your love for us and for your broken world. How astonished we are that you call us to be your holy people. How thankful we are that you have left your spirit with us till the work on earth, earth is done. May our lives ablaze with the power of that spirit, lights of hope in a dark and troubled world. So 
I've started and restarted this sermon a lot of times, and um, I just have to get it out Saturday night. And I didn't expect when I began this week that the the passage from Joel would be the most um, I don't know the most salient of the verses I, I was expecting to celebrate Pentecost. I expected that we would wear our orange and yellow and and red and that this would be a time to celebrate uh, unity. This would be a time to celebrate um, God calling people from all over, all different nations, every tongue. And um, I didn't expect that, that the verse from Joel chapter to verse 30, I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. That that would be the verse that really stands out, that jumps off the page. But we're in the fifth night of our city's burning, and we're in the fifth day of our church's grieving. So it doesn't seem like this is the time to celebrate. Um, seems like the time to cry out to God. Last night I met with some people and we we prayed through some of the Psalms and that was surprisingly helpful. And I encourage it for anyone, just if you are trying to find your way and you don't know where to start, um, and you can always start with John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Um, you could always start with that, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Because there's hope in that, and there's an understanding that God's familiar with suffering. He let his own son come and experience pain. God the Father uh, let the sin and evil of the world rest on his shoulders for a brief moment on the cross. That's why he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then just within almost the same breath, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. God came to forgive, but he went through suffering to get to that point. So we're in that place of suffering. Um, Jesus didn't stay on the cross forever, we know that. But he was there for a while. And God's people um, sometimes go through these, these times that are beyond our control for one thing, but also beyond our understanding. And also, um, where we come to the end of ourselves. So we, we want to cry out to someone, you know? George Floyd cried out to his mom. Our African-American brothers and sisters have been crying out as well. That we would hear, take them seriously, take their pain seriously. Yeah, scripture says everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. 
And a lot of people are like, hey, hey, settle down. But it's been 400 years since the slave boats brought the first Africans to the shores here. And so it's not that quick to be angry. They have pretty good reason. And uh, so we're in a time of, of crying out to God. Um, and Paul says that if one part of the body hurts, one part suffers, we all suffer. So if Pentecost is real, if the Holy Spirit came, and I believe that he did, and I've sensed my heart strangely warmed, as John Wesley says, by the fire of that spirit, well, if, if that's true, that God was making one family out of all different nations, and then this has to grieve us. I don't care if you're out in the country and far enough that you can't see the smoke from the fires here in the Twin Cities, but it has to grieve us. So in our grief though, when we come to the Psalms, the Psalms give voice, and it's voice of people who have suffered. It's the voices of people maybe 3,000 years ago, a long time ago. And the feelings are the same. And incredibly, the God is, that they're crying out to is the same. <laughs> that our God is a God who doesn't change like shifting shadows. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a God who we, we know best and most clearly through Jesus, but is also revealed to us through the pages of scripture and also uh, through that mysterious wind blowing of the Holy Spirit that changes us, that changes our hearts, that sets a little fire inside of us. And sometimes it gets stronger like Jeremiah, who said, it was like a fire shut up in my bones. I can't be quiet. So God hasn't changed. Our situation changed a lot in a week. God, not surprised. No, we're surprised. Some of us are probably in shock. God was prepared for this and um, he'll be prepared for tomorrow and Jesus said don't worry about tomorrow today has enough trouble of its own sometimes it's hard for us to see that but um, that's what we believe and that's that's the gospel that's the good news um, that God has um, this world in in his hands and that not only that he cares for each of us um, and in the end he brings justice but he doesn't just bring justice he also brings peace he brings justice and peace there's a psalm um, again that psalm 85 where if i can find it real quick love and faithfulness meet together Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Man, don't we want that? That's what we got to pray for. That's what the kingdom of God is about. When the Spirit came and lit up the room that the disciples were in, it wasn't just for the, the crazy experience, and it wasn't for them to just uh, revel amongst themselves and talk about how how wild it was. No, they went out into the streets and they proclaimed God's truth. And so that's the same, it's the same spirit that uh, moves in us, um, that righteousness and peace would kiss each other uh, in our lives. And so um, I want to turn in prayer together in the Psalms 
I want us to use that as a as a guide um, to give a voice uh, to ourselves and also maybe even to enter into the suffering of our brothers and sisters, um, especially brothers and sisters of color, especially our um, black neighbors, our African-American neighbors, really. Man, they've been going through it. So, um, when you have to put up signs that say Black Lives Matter, I mean, you're feeling unheard, you're feeling unseen. And as a church that's mostly white, with a denomination that has uh, European roots, Dutch roots, um, we have uh, some work to do. And um, maybe part of that work is just imagining what it might be like. Well, what might it be like um, to, to have a different color skin when we wake up in the morning uh, and look in the mirror and how is that reflected in our culture and um, what might that be like to know that maybe our um, great-grandfather was was a slave or or to know that um, we're not going to be given the same treatment um, we might be pulled over just for walking in our neighborhood with a hoodie on we might get shot if we're running what might that be like and the psalms give us words give voice for that too um, I want to encourage us to do that and we do it because this isn't um, this isn't the end of of God's work even though there's chaos around and there's destruction around um, churches have been black white uh, Latino um, Asian American leaders we've we've been in contact with each other just here in the Twin Cities praying for one another. Um, we've been in contact um, trying to serve our communities, cleaning up. Um, and uh, one of the messages too that's been clear is, is that uh, there's a desire for unity, but there's work to be done. Uh, as a church at Faith, I want to encourage us to do some reading. We're going to offer some, not only the Psalms, but also some book recommendations, um, maybe have a little book club, um, but to get into the, the shoes and imagine what, what it might be like um, to wake up in the morning and um, see someone who looks like us, see someone uh, like George Floyd uh, on the news um, under the knee of someone who looks different than us. That's hard to hear. I know it's hard to hear. There's nothing easy about it. A lot of the Bible is not not easy either. So I'd love to um, I'd love it if kids didn't have to hear this, but um, I don't know. It's, it's sin and there's grace as well, so I will lean into that. <laughs> um, maybe I should back up. No. Um, let's close with a prayer. Um, a prayer of lament and um, to help give voice to it, uh, I ask if Tammy Walhoff could share a psalm that she wrote. Um, it's based on the psalms and based on what she's experiencing right now in St. Paul, uh, recovering from COVID and um, seeing her community uh, suffering. So uh, I want to encourage you to do something similar if you'd like 
and and write your own um, psalm if you uh, if you feel um, creative and and would like to express your own hurts. Um, otherwise, feel free to read Psalm ninety or Psalm forty, Psalm sixty, Psalm eighty. Um, there's lament all around, all through the pages of, of the Psalms. Um, let's pray. Restore us again, God our Savior. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. And God, we lift up all those who are on the front lines tonight. Lord, we lift up those protesters who are peacefully demonstrating. We lift up those who uh, police, who are um, serving and protecting. Uh, we lift up those who are um, keeping a watchful eye on their neighborhood, those who are our first responders, um, those who are I'm going to work in the hospitals and places where uh, many of us would um, not wish to go at this time. Lord, have mercy. God, and please don't leave us the way that we are, but change us. Holy Spirit, if your fire needs to burn, clean some sin in us. Please do it. Lord, if there are um, hidden sins within our hearts, prejudices, racism, um, God, please bring it to light through your spirit. We know that when you, when you move in us, it's not for no reason. It's not for simple destruction. It's for <laughs> destroying something that has no value so that something real can take root and grow. So come and change our hearts that we can be um, your representatives here in our community and beyond. It's in Jesus' name. Uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. My heart is broken. A modern-day psalm of lament. God, my community is on fire. Buildings are in rubble and my heart is broken. My heart is broken. It is broken by the horrible unjust action of the police officer who killed George Floyd with a knee on his neck and by the apathy of other officers who let it happen. It is broken by the hurt that runs so deep as a result of systematic racism persistent in our cities. My heart is broken. It is broken by a culture of bias and bigotry, intolerance of differences, partiality in favor of those already privileged. It is broken by a culture of supremacy, of authoritative power and abuse, yes, within the MPD and other institutions, but also within and throughout our communities. My heart is broken. It is broken by the violence of both racism and the violent explosion of emotion that has harmed the very communities already most impacted by injustice. It is broken by the terrible damage to basic businesses needed in economically disadvantaged neighborhoods by people who have limited options. It is broken by the destruction done to black, brown, immigrant-owned businesses already struggling in the midst of the global health pandemic. My heart is broken by the deep injustices in my, in my own community. It is broken by injustice and brokenness throughout the world. Today and many days, I call out to God like the prophet Habakkuk. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before us. There is strife and conflict abounds. Asaph cried out to God in Psalm 82, How long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? 
Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hands of the wicked. But is God defending the unjust? Or are we? Through the prophet Isaiah, aren't we told to loose the chains of injustice? Aren't we told to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke? Then our light will break forth like the dawn and our healing will quickly appear. Then when we call, the Lord will answer. And when we cry for help, God will say, Here am I. God created a beautiful world of abundance with amazing diversity and people created in God's own image. God loves this world. God desires right relationship. God will and does help us to be participants in reconciliation when we put ourselves into God's hands. When we align our wills with God's will, we desire right relationship. Today my heart is broken. Habakkuk's was too. Yet he proclaimed, Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. So today, although my heart is broken, I can proclaim that though buildings are in rubble and justice seems distant, though National Guard fill our streets and communities remain anxious, though pandemic continues to distance us from one another, yet I will rejoice in the Lord and I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is our strength. Lord God, this Pentecost, Give us hearts for reconciliation, for righteousness, which is right relationship with you, and for justice, which is right relationship among people and all that you have created. Give us hearts filled with love for you and for our neighbors. Fill us and our communities with your spirit. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who demonstrated and continues to demonstrate and teach us true reconciliation, real right relationship, and unending, boundless love. Amen. Since writing this lament, since writing this lament on Friday, Saturday has already brought hundreds of people into the streets to help with cleanup. It's brought piles of donations and an outpouring of concern for the neighborhoods and businesses that have been decimated. These first steps are the work of the Holy Spirit. Moving forward, may we all strive to live God's justice, peace, and love with one another. Set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very soul. Holy Spirit, come and let us now. your church we need your power in us we seek your kingdom first we humble and we thirst we fears to waste our lives for your our joy and pride The hurt, the sick, the poor, at least. 
So then, beloved people of God, go then with this blessing. May God go before you to lead you. May he go behind you to protect you. May he go beneath you to support you, beside you to befriend you, and within you to change you. People of God, do not be afraid, but go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Good morning, Faith Church. I'm Randy Kroll, one of the deacons uh, at Faith Church. Thank you for your continued support uh, during this season uh, of Faith Church Ministries, but also the uh, ministries that are important to us as a church. Today, our offering is for Resonate um, Global Ministries. Resonate is an agency of the Christian Reformed Church, which seeks to energize churches uh, around a mission mindset. Uh, in addition, uh, uh, the Resonate Global Ministries also uh, provides opportunity for um, growth as mission leaders uh, and provides a mission, a holistic mission network that uh, gives opportunity for a specific mi uh, ministry uh, in various part places, uh, both domestically as well as internationally. So we encourage you to um, give generously for this particular cause. Uh, we recognize that organizations and ministries during this period have been impacted greatly because of, gen in general, uh, revenue has decreased, but th their costs of operations continue. Uh, and so it's important for us as a church to recognize that and to be generous. Um, uh, to these um, valuable ministries. Um, so you can do uh, your, your contributions in two ways. You can send them directly through U.S. mail to Faith Christian Reformed Church, 1600 Silver Lake Road, uh, New Brighton, Minnesota, 55112, Attention Deacons. Or you can do so online uh, by going to the, the uh, uh, Faith Christian Reformed Church website, uh, and uh, using the pay online option. Uh, very simple, very secure. Uh, the uh, website address is faithcrcmn.com. Uh, uh, so we appreciate, uh, again, your um, continued giving uh, during this period. I uh, just uh, want to also recognize the fact that, that during this period of time, we as a church are, are active in... Um, meeting the needs, the spiritual needs, the emotional needs, the social needs, as well as the physical needs of, of both our members as well as, as our friends uh, in the community. And uh, so we want to bring that to your attention. Uh, uh, again, as um, uh, in, in case uh, you uh, are, are a person right now who are struggling um, with those needs and um, uh, would like someone to walk alongside you. Um, as it relates to uh, dealing with those issues. Um, certainly uh, feel free to contact one of the deacons uh, by sending uh, an email to office at faithcrcmn.org uh, and provide a preferred uh, contact um, means um, uh, in, so that we as deacons can um, uh, get back to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, and blessings in your week.